Episode 261, The White Ghost. The man in leather didn't expect that Aiden would accept his challenge so readily. The corner of his mouth hooked up in a grimace. However, he was ready nonetheless. He badgered a few students out of a student car directly and said with a smile, You can drive this car. I'll drive my own car. A few groups of students, including those Leatherman had kicked out of the car, were realizing that a competition was about to ensue. Some of them mocked the man's shamelessness. Hey, why won't you drive the student car yourself? The man in leather glared. Only poor people can't afford cars. When you have your own car, you drive your own car. The students looked at the expensive Cadillac, but they weren't particularly impressed by the man's bravado. Aiden, meanwhile, seemed to remain indifferent. He got into the student car without complaint. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go, he said. Can't wait to make you cry like a baby, the man growled. He grinned and returned to his Cadillac. The red-haired woman offered a kiss to cheer him on. Soon enough, the two cars were parked side by side at the decided starting point. It was agreed that the two would do a lap around the driving school practice course, and whoever returned to the starting point first would win. The red-haired woman stood in between the two cars, waving on her boyfriend excitedly. Three, two, one, go! The two cars had distinctly different engine sounds, but both took off at top speed. On the straightaway, the Cadillac quickly pulled far ahead and arrived at a slope. The man in leather put his head out of the window and sneered at Aiden, trailing behind. Eat my dust, kid, he laughed. Aiden ignored Leatherman, instead flooring the gas pedal with determination. The Cadillac mounted the slope and zipped down. When the Leatherman turned his head again to check on Aiden's progress, his eyes grew wide. The tiny, white student car, like an arrow or a bullet, was shooting over the slope. How in the world? The man in leather exclaimed. He was so stunned by Aiden's resurgence that he almost ran the Cadillac into a tree on the side of the road. He yelped and righted himself, but he was frightened now. While taking advantage of the leather man's momentary distraction, Aiden shot over the slope and passed the Cadillac. Hey! The man screamed. He could barely believe it. He slammed his gas pedal to the floor of his car to catch up. But next up came a series of sharp curves, and the man watched in awe as Aiden maneuvered around them. The little car seemed to float left and right, taking each turn with incredible speed, not to mention shocking grace and skill. It was as if there was no obstacle in his way at all. The man in leather choked, taking the curves in a panic. His car was quite expensive, and he didn't dare drive as recklessly as Aiden did. His steering skills also left quite a bit to be desired, and so he slowed down significantly in the curves. By now, he was much too far behind to ever be able to catch up to Aiden. The leather man in his Cadillac had to watch the white student car disappear in clouds of exhaust fumes. It seems as if the students of the driving school had finally all calmed down when the little white student car came careening into view, crossing the makeshift finish line. Here comes the white ghost! He's undefeatable! On the driveway, all the practicing students saw Aiden coming down the track at a fast pace and pulled out of his way. The driving school broadcast started up again. Warning, White Ghost, back. Cadet car nine, Coach Batson, please reduce speed. Warning, Cadet car nine, Coach Batson, please reduce speed. Warning. Batson was still inside the school when he heard the broadcast. It made him jump up. What's wrong with this kid? He rushed out to the driving course right away, panting and face blue. Aiden had long finished the race and was waiting patiently by the starting line by the time the Cadillac came rolling into view. Winning a race. Competitive ability, plus one. Current level, one. All the students were dumbfounded. A fancy, expensive sports car lost so definitively to a tattered old student car. The red-haired woman was even more shocked. She didn't know when the man in leather would come back, and she was staring so awestruck at Aiden that it seemed like she didn't care. The leather man was already mad that he had lost the race, but when he saw his lover making eyes at the day's hero, he lost all control. He rushed to the student car, shoving Aiden's shoulder aggressively. You must have cheated. Let's go again. He was really asking for another serving? Already? Aiden's eyes were bright and was about to agree until a figure leaped out of nowhere and kicked the leather man to the ground. Will you stop that, you fool? He yelled. It was none other than a disgruntled Batson, screaming and swearing for his life at the man in leather. 
After berating the man, Batson glanced at his student car and turned to Aiden. Mr. Dale, no need to engage with this lowlife any longer. I'll kick him out of the driving school later, he said with a flattering smile. The man in leather, hearing this, got up off the ground and brushed himself off anxiously. How are you going to kick me out? I paid for these classes. Batson didn't speak, but it didn't matter. His facial expression was enough to tell the man that he was stewing. If it wasn't for this cocky idiot, Dale would have left the school already. He glared at the man in leather coldly. I've got a lot of power here. I put in one word and you will be expelled from the school immediately, he said in a low growl. If you know what's best for you, you'll get out of here before I have to kick you out. The man in leather was so angry that he practically shook, but he knew that Batson was not someone to be trifled with. He trudged back to his Cadillac, the red-haired girl in tow, his spirits dashed. After a day's worth of waiting in line, he was expelled from the driving school in mere minutes. Before they left, the red-haired girl turned around and secretly blew a few kisses Aiden's way, which made him nauseous.